Today I'm going to talk about understanding the Warcraft 3 MDL. We're going to begin with part 1, models and surfaces. To display a 3D model, a computer begins with a series of points. Given those points, there's code written to connect them together. And when the points are connected together, then something is done to know which side is the outside and which side is the inside, and they're given a surface. Once a shape has a surface, people can write computer code that will shade it to make it look more like a real-life object. And once you've got the code for a, a shaded shape and the ability to draw it on the screen, <coughs> someone had the brilliant idea of wrapping just a 2D picture around the surface of this shape. So instead of drawing it as a, as a white surface, you just draw it as a picture on the surface. There's nothing magic about the process of 3D models, and there's nothing that prevents you from using it to produce something of your own. One of the coolest things about the Warcraft model format, the MDL, is that all of the information is stored in a text-based format. When you look at it, you can sort of make sense of it. <coughs> For example, all of the shape data, the, the sort of things we were just looking at, are saved in what's called a geoset. The geoset has many vertices, which are just three-dimensional points, those points we looked at that the computer connects together, and literally the MDL is just a series of these three-dimensional points, like we saw, and it goes through hundreds, hundreds of these points that it connects together to make the character. And then there's another list called normals. Now, normals are, again, a series of three coordinates, sort of a 3D point, but they're used for the shading system. The way normals work is that a light comes at the model and the computer checks to see how the direction of the light, the, the ray, and the ray of the normal differ. It uses that to decide whether or not the light is hitting the model straight on or from the side. Uh, you can see the, uh, the normals are displayed on this model as little tiny blue lines projected outward from the vertices. So what these lines mean, right? I'm, I have a, I've placed example lights in this, in this uh, uh, scene we're looking at here. These, these lines, when they're pointing towards the light, so the light, you know, the, the theoretical light source in this scene would be just a little bit in front of his face there, it looks like, right? As, as the light is coming in towards him, it's, it's uh, very nearly directly opposite some of these littler, these smaller lines here, so they're very bright. Whereas the, the, uh, the normals on the reverse side of him are pointed away from the light, and so as the light comes toward that normal, it would be considered to be going about the same direction. And that tells the computer that this side over here is the back. Now by doing that, it just repeats that process over and over and over all across the model and shades it. Typically, if you're just making a Warcraft character by combining parts of others, you might just combine existing models that have existing normal data and not have to worry about it. But now and then it comes up as an issue that you have some problems with shading and maybe you want to try to change something. <clears throat> Scroll down a little further in the MDL and pretty soon you'll find yourself at a T-vertices section. A couple of models have multiples of these if they have a multi-layered material, and I'll get into that a little later. But uh, <clears throat> the T-vertices are a group of 2D coordinates specifying how the vertices are laid out on the model's texture. Now, if you want to see an example of that, I've got one. Some programs have really handy functionality where they'll just lay out the uh, T-vertices for you so you see all of the vertices of the model laid out on its texture. So here we see that same texture I showed you before and you can see the uh, different parts of the model of this footman laid out onto the texture. So for example if I were to grab this part of the little helmet and use like a move tool in this program I would change the way the helmet looks. It, it would no longer have that yellow on the top of it. You know, The corresponding uh, T vertices would be updated and as you see here with these pictures it would go from looking like the one on the left to the one on the right. Scroll on down a little bit farther through the MDL and pretty soon you'll find yourself at the bottom of that first geoset where you'll see the material ID. Now you might also notice uh, a little uh, 
negative 340 quadrillion extent number hanging around here this uh, these quadrillions if you happen to see negative 340 quadrillion pop up in your model I'll just tell you that is uh, the result uh, direct result of Warcraft 3 MDLX converter this program so uh, you know that's my little review of their software otherwise fantastic software but uh, sometimes inserts negative 3 quadrillion in your model where it wasn't really there alright anyway um, so you see material ID here right which uh, it specifies a particular material uh, and the materials are up here the materials are basically the surfaces wrapped around a geo set typically they'll consist of a reference to one of the textures or maybe two and uh, maybe some information about it being a two-sided texture or having no shading and your materials can have, you know, you can have like a multi-layer material. You know, here's an example of a material with two layers. Uh, here's an example of a material with one layer. And like this, this two-layered material, right? The top layer is the zero-width texture, so that's using the footman. And here, this this sort of segues into textures, right? So the textures are just a direct reference to a file, or sometimes a reference to a replaceable texture. Like for example, number one in the replaceable is team color. So this is a reference to team color. So here, this is saying it's using the uh, the footman texture with blend so it'll have an alpha channel on it that it'll show through and then underneath that it has a layer that is using the uh, uh, replaceable texture one which is team color and the team color is unshaded so this says then that there is a layer of the footman skin texture on top of the team color texture which will have no shading applied so all that stuff about all the normals pretty much just ignored right it's just just straight up displays brilliant red even at night coming through the armor if you're using my software and you open a model like this footman uh, you can see here that the two main geo sets that we were just looking at will highlight in green if you mouse over them and so you can see that the green highlight of geo set 2 is on uh, on the shoulder pads boots and shield and pretty much all the rest of the model is on Geoset 1. So what that means is that the uh, the shield and other stuff that highlights green when you mouse over Geoset 2 uh, is the stuff that will be using the team color information, the, the double layers from Material 2. This corresponds to what the model actually looks like when you actually render it, where you'll see it has uh, red sections in the places that had lit up green when I looked at that second Geoset showing that those are the team color and I can change the team color make it blue say you know and it'll have the blue sections there now just for good luck let's recap what you learned today geosets have vertices that define their shape they have normals that are 3D vectors perpendicular to model surfaces that define how light affects the model and T vertices that map the model onto a 2D texture a material is the surface of a geoset it consists of one or many layers, each with a reference to a texture. Flags like unshaded provide control over basic display types. Textures are typically assigned to the material and are a direct reference to the file path of an image file. The image field on a texture can be left blank with a replaceable ID provided instead for textures like team color or team glow.